Hey, welcome back. My name is Steph, Yogi Online, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Maya. So Maya is um, somebody I know from my local town. She's an acquaintance. I've seen you around quite a lot, but this is the first opportunity we've had to really chat, so it's nice to do it here. And the reason why I invited Maya on today was because um, we're friends on Facebook and she's been posting quite a lot of really interesting stuff around the keto diet, the ketogenic diet and all the benefits she's felt from it. So it's really piqued my curiosity and I wanted to invite her along to tell us about this lifestyle and this um, health choice that she's made. So welcome Maya, really nice to see you. Thank you for coming to share. So. Let's just start from the beginning of this journey. What brought you to this keto diet? Well, let's let's let me ask you what is the keto diet first? What is keto? Um, essentially, uh, you are in ketosis by how you eat. So it's not that you're not eating ketones. You're not eating a ketogenic diet. You eat in a way that triggers your body to go into ketosis. So it's a metabolic state. It's a metabolic state. So what is ketosis? Um, well, so to get into ketosis, the very, um, the very most simple basic um, rule, if you like, is 20 grams of carbohydrate per day or less and high fat. So about 70% of your calories or 70% of my calories a day is from fat. Mm -hmm. um, it's a moderate protein, low carb, high fat way of eating. Okay. Um, essentially what that does is it triggers your body to go into ketosis uh, which means that your liver starts producing ketones for fuel and you become a fat burner, burner rather than a glucose burner. Uh, by removing the carbohydrates out of your diet you, um, you become someone who has access to your fat stores. Um, because your insulin becomes low. Mm -hmm. You can't have uh, ketones and insulin at the same time. So you're either uh, insulin is high and you're a glucose burner and you're thriving off carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. And uh, after a while of your insulin being high, uh, you start having problems. Most people start having problems. Um, and when you go into ketosis, uh, you revert, you change your metabolism. So your insulin drops and your ketones come up and then your body becomes a body that is um, thriving on fat. You thrive on your own fat and you thrive on the fat that you eat. And unfortunately, fat's become demonized in the last, since the 70s, 80s. Yeah, yeah. Um, so people have reduced fats massively and fats are satiating. They make you feel good, they make you feel full. Mm. So when you remove them, you have to replace them with something and the narrative has been uh, carbohydrate. So we've been told to eat seven to 10 portions of carbohydrate, carbohydrates a day from uh, grains and, and potatoes and, mm. and starchy veg and, yeah. and sugar and everything fat free has had the sugar, uh, the fats removed and then they put sugar in it so there's loads of hidden sugars and basically our carbohydrate uh, way of eating has escalated massively. Yeah, yeah. And that imbalance has seen the result, which is diabetes, obesity, cancer, dementia, all going sky high mm. since uh, 70s, 80s. Mm. Uh, 10 years after the guidelines started telling people to reduce fat and increase yeah. carbohydrate. Yeah, and those studies, as, as I understand them, were funded largely by grain, the sugar, grain and the sugar. grain and sugar industry yeah, um, to debunk that. Massively, there were there were two original theories about why obesity was uh, increasing. Mm. Uh, an English guy called Yutkin, I think, um, he said it was sugar, and Ansel Keys in America said it was fats. Ansel Keys had the friends in Time magazine. He seems to have been a bit of a Trump-like character, mm. a bit of a bully, very egotistical, mm. very determined to get his way as the way mm -hmm. and he um he he got the funding from the sugar companies to say it was fat's fault and he doctored his study so he cherry-picked from his studies so there's yes. a thing called the seven or six country study 
where he proves that fat is why people get fat and they, mm. why, why the cholesterol goes up and why heart disease is happening. And actually, he did 22 studies, and he just omitted all the studies that didn't prove that. Yes. So the foundation of our education about fats and carbohydrates since 1977 with the food pyramid right. is wrong. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. And when you go into ketosis, you know it's wrong. Yes. Because of how you feel. Okay, so we'll go on to that. I mean, first, I guess what I ought to say is that we're not medics. No. Nope. I'm a yogi. You're I'm, I'm a person. This is my personal experience this is, and personal yeah. understanding. Yeah, there's uh, no medical, uh, no medical advice being given. No, so we all have to take ownership and responsibility for the choices we make. We're just discussing mm. how you've emerged um, into this new lifestyle. So, um, yeah. So, so tell me, what is it practically? How does keto look in your life? Um, what do you eat <laughs> and how do you eat I might I might go back a bit sure maybe, please do because, because uh, there's there's kind of a lead up to it like normally what I used to eat I'd have a couple of slices of ra- ra- uh, sourdough toast yeah with a couple of boiled eggs in the morning yeah uh, with marmite and butter yeah and then uh, at lunch I'd have like a soup a uh, piece of toast with butter uh, evening meal I'd have um like a Thai curry, I didn't really have rice, but I just had it more like a soup. And then um, I love cherries, strawberries, raspberries, apples, grapes, every day. Uh, so a really I, healthy I, diet. I used to do juice fasting, yeah. lifelong vegetarian. Yeah. Uh, two years ago, three years ago, I did um, one month juicing, mostly green juice with like one apple, one orange in, no big deal. Uh, I did it for the whole month of May, two years running. Um, I, I've i lived and worked in a fasting spa in Thailand. Mm. No one's ever mentioned the word ketosis. Mm. Uh, so, but it was quite a healthy diet. So it's veg- on veg- paper. Vegetarian whole life. Yeah. Uh, now, or, or more recently, added a bit of fish, but never ate meat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, on paper, from a topness point of view, from a health and healing point of view, poster child yes absolute poster child um was two stone heavier in weight 14 months ago um always fasted and then oh and felt amazing for two months and then gradually the weight would come back on even though i was eating super healthy i ate chocolate as well i love crisps and chips so not all super healthy but yeah. essentially a vegetarian yeah whole food yeah lots of plants not pa- loads of packeted stuff mm. or any no packeted stuff really mm. um loads of salads absolutely amazing cut to 14 months ago yeah uh really sick i'd had three to four years of chronic pain which i'd been ignoring gosh migraines uh i was taking neurofen every week twice a week with headaches mm. um i had neck lower back problems my knees were swelling creaking um i was feeling very unhappy indeed and i've been ignoring it because i have a core belief that i'm a strong i've always been a strong person yeah and so it's just in there i'm a strong person yes and uh i had a crisis and i saw this word perimenopausal when i was looking at and i didn't know that perimenopausal one of the things is um pain chronic pain Mm. and so then I was like oh my god I'm getting old Mm. Uh, and at that point I was 45 and I and I'd assumed that the perimenopausal stuff would happen when I was about 47 Mm. or later I didn't think it'd be 45 I thought 49 it would start you know so I was I was really shocked yeah um because I've got background in fasting I knew if I came home and water fasted um I would uh give my body the opportunity to reset Mm -hmm. So I started water fasting the day I got back from America because America consolidated the problems because there's such bad food quality yeah. and so much sugar. And, yeah. and I was in a family situation and we all went into this crazy past snacking on sweets, comfort eating. It's a really emotionally full on charged time. So it, it escalated everything and brought it to a head. Um, and I came back to England and the day after I got home, I started water fasting. Mm. Um, by day three, seventy percent of my pain had gone. Um, I got to—I didn't know how long I was going to do. 
Yeah. Um, I've done a couple before. I'm totally up for my body not wanting to do it or wanting to do it. I, I wasn't setting a limit um, of, of how I wanted to do it. Um, and I got to day seven and my mum said she was going to join in. And now this is like, she's the most precious object, creature, person, whatever in my life. She <laughs> said she was going to join in. She'd had sciatica for seven years so bad she'd put in two banisters in her stairs. She was having to use both supports to get up and down her stairs. And she's had 20 years of angina, stopping right. her walking up the high street, um, yes. some pain down her left arm. Yes. Stable angina, but nevertheless really problematic. Yeah, yeah. And so she joined in. And at this point, I know the most important thing about fasting is how you break. And so I really started researching how to break fasting properly. Mm. And that is what led me onto this journey. Right. Because there's a fabulous doctor called Dr. Jason Fung. If you're interested, look him up. He's utterly amazing. Mm. And he kept coming up and he kept talking about this thing called ketosis. And I realized that the thing I love most about fasting is from day three when you feel amazing and that is ketosis. And I had no idea. Right. So es essentially from day four of my mum's fast, she didn't need to use those banisters again. And that's seven years of a problem. The sciatica went totally. And it's incredible. Um, and I learned that if we broke our fast eating ketogenically, we mm. wouldn't stop being in ketosis. So that's what we've done ever since that fast. We've I see. Stayed. So you made the link when you were fasting yeah. to the feel good, the health, yeah. that rush of the health that you get. mental clarity as and, well. And you looked it up yeah. and you discovered that was, ketosis. that is ketosis. And, and you thought, hmm, there's a way to continue yeah. this. And that there's a way that if you keep eating, you do not lose the benefits of that Your fasting fast. state mm. through food. So essentially, when you're eating ketogenically, you're getting 70% of the benefits of fasting through eating. Gosh. And, and this is utterly revolutionary for it people is. who want to get well, who don't want to fast. That's me all over. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Mm. It's absolutely phenomenal. So um, you gave us a picture of your what your diet was, which is your classic healthy diet. Lovely sourdough, probably organic bread Yay. with eggs. Then you had a soup with some toast, and then you'd have a curry, not so much... Um, salads, fabulous rice, salads. Great salad. So, so how would that meal in a day, let's say you had um, the curry and a salad for supper, and you had the soup for lunch, and how would that look on a keto? How would that meal plan... I, I've, I've, there's a fabulous app called Chronometer, which is free, which you can just put on your phone, and that will tell you uh, the, ingredient, the nutrition of what you're eating. So uh, to begin with especially, it really helps to know what 20 grams of carbohydrate actually is in your food. Yes. So like one slice of brown bread is about 15 grams of carbohydrate. Okay. Okay. So you've only got 20 in a day, so you're not going to use it up via a piece of bread. No. Um, but you will use loads of spinach, which would be like three or four, three grams of carbohydrate. Yes. And so you, 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 for me, I use um, green leaf as my main carbohydrate. I don't have it in sort of potatoes and things like that um so when i spent i i put in a couple of my normal days ways of eating and it was about 300 grams of carbohydrate mm. that mm. would be my average and that's not even a special day where i have friends around for oolong tea ceremonies and yes. we all have dates and cakes and gorgeous chocolates and uh lentil chips with hummus and things like this which i thought was better than crisps mm. but it's mm. utter nonsense yeah yeah it's yeah. utter nonsense it's, yeah it's it's massive inflammatory foods yes all of that is massive inflammatory foods yes. if you are carbohydrate sensitive yes if you're not you're fine do whatever but how do you know if you're carbohydrate sensitive um you'll be putting on weight especially central weight uh, this shows that the liver is beginning to accumulate fat. Okay. Uh, oh, interesting. Yeah. When, when your insulin levels are up, your body will store and hold on and make fat. Um, if your insulin levels are down, that's not what happens. Um, insulin is triggered every time you eat carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. Your body has to up the insulin to put the sugar that you're eating into the yes. cells. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, over time, your cells become insulin resistant. So this can't happen. So the body panics about where the sugar should be because it shouldn't be in your blood. 
So it then gives it to the liver, the liver turns it into fat. And you, right. start, you start converting glucose into fat via your liver. And you yeah. cannot access your fat because your insulin is up. So, so it's, why a, it's a nasty, vicious cycle. Right, I see, I see. But that's, sorry, that's just central body fat. That's just one indicator. So okay. a foggy head, a brain fog a lot, that shows insulin resistance. Yeah, also, interesting. Um, fatigue in the afternoon around three o'clock yeah. for sure is insulin resistance. Yeah. Cravings for carbohydrates, needing to eat frequently, not being able to go a long time without food, all shows yes. insulin resistance. Check, 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 check. Um, <laughs> also cancer, dementia, um, all are, and obesity and diabetes are all uh, all have insulin resistance as underlying causes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, you're not eating carbs. Where do we find carbs? Okay, we know bread, we know rice, we know pasta, potatoes. But f surely, car I mean, carbs means sugar. So, so we're going with fruit as well. Do we? Do you have to restrict your fruit intake? Yeah, very much. Um, berries are fine. Okay. Um, an apple is about. 20, 30 grams of carbohydrate, 20 to 30 grams okay. of carbohydrate in one apple. Okay. Um, sometimes I have an apple, when I'm premenstrual, I really crave an apple, I bung it in my salad, it's absolutely fine, but it's not a daily continuous thing. And yeah. I, and I used to have a lot, and I used to have a lot of cherries and strawberries, and yeah. I had lots, and it's, it's that, you just, you everything that makes you feel good is about your insulin being low and, right. ketone and ketones being up um, so it's like a short termism isn't it that the sugar fuel is like a short term yeah. fuel but you have to get over this hump and perhaps get the body used to a, a kind of a slow release fat burning state yeah i guess you only have about 1700 stored calories as glucose in your body but even someone like you who's slender is going to have probably at least 80,000 stored calories as fat. Yeah. But you can't access it when your insulin is up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so hence that why you would lose weight and then put it back on. And I'm really interested, I mean, I'm very fascinated in menopause and perimenopause. And what you're describing with the brain fog, the, the insulin resistance, is very similar to a lot of perimenopausal symptoms, aren't they? Brain fog, putting on weight. I've definitely put on weight around my middle where I never had it before. Um, the achiness. So why do you think that is? Do you think it's because? Yeah, well, I'm curious if you have any ideas why that would be. Uh, my guess correlated my, in some my, way. My guess is that insulin resistance takes time to happen. Uh, it's not a quick. It's not a quick thing. It's ten, twenty years of eating a lot of carbohydrate. Um, your your if if you uh, if you go to the doctor and they check your blood sugar levels, uh, your blood sugar levels will read fine, normal. Yeah. Um, <coughs> to ten to twenty years before you get diabetes diagnosed, because your blood sugar levels have gone up. That is because insulin is keeping the blood sugar down. Yeah. So your insulin, if they checked insulin, so which they don't. Right. If they checked insulin for yeah. ten to twenty years before you get sick. Yeah. They would see the insulin level is doing this because it's trying to keep the blood sugar down. Okay. And then at some point, when you finally get diagnosed, it's yeah. because the insulin, your body has become resistant yes. to the insulin working, yeah. and it started to dive. At this point, your blood sugar will go up, yeah. and they say, oh, now, you're, now you've got diabetes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could have seen it 10 to 20 years before. By so checking the increase and gradually increasing of levels. Insulin. Your of blood insulin, sugar will yeah. stay normal <clears throat> because you only have five grams or, or one to two teaspoons of sugar in your blood. So if you eat a piece of bread, which is the equivalent of three, if you eat a jacket potato, which is 10 to 20 teaspoons of sugar once it's in your wow. mouth, and you only have a top, a maximum of two teaspoons of sugar in your whole blood system, your body freaks out about where to put it. Yes. And if so it's quickly converting it to fat. Because your cells become insulin resistant, they can't open for the energy of the sugar to go into them. Right. So they stay closed. Oh, I see. So you're hungry. So you're not even even getting the just, energy. You're not getting the energy. So you're tired and you're hungry, even though you've just eaten, and now you want dessert two hours later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because of the carbohydrate content, 
you haven't received the energy from the carbohydrate. Yeah. Your body's freaking out because it can't be in the blood, so it turns it into fat. Yes. When you go into ketosis, you reverse all of this. Mm -hmm. So when you're in ketosis, you don't have, um, you don't store fat, you burn fat. You don't crave food because you have the fat source in your body. You have your fuel source strapped to you. Yeah. So there's kilos here of fat. Yeah. Which when you're in ketosis and you don't, you're not hungry. Yeah. You're not at a calorie deficit. It's not a calorie deficient diet. Yeah. Even if you don't eat, and that's why fasting's easy. Yes. Because when you when you don't eat, you are eating. Right. So everyone, one of the first things that happens to people in ketosis, so it takes three days to go into ketosis okay. maximum. Wow. Fat adaptation takes months or weeks, depending on the person, but ketosis is quick. What's fat adaptation? It's all keto adaptation. It's where the body has learned to use fats for fuel. I see. This can take, this can take longer, especially if you're athletic. This can, uh, athletes need to give themselves one to two months to really learn for their muscle structure to learn to use ketones. Right. Because they're used to the quick hit of from course, the carbohydrate. Of course. So you're re-educating the, the cells of the body. Really. You, you are. And yeah. also different cells become insulin resistant as well. You're not just all this. You start with, with fat cells becoming insulin resistant, but later on muscle cells can, and brain cells can become insulin resistant mm -hmm. and then you get dementia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's uh, you're reversing so much uh, progression of illness by doing this. Gosh, it's so interesting, so isn't much. it? I mean, I know that it's used in diabetes. Yeah. It's also used in epilepsy, isn't yeah. it? Front, so frontline epileptic treatment for drug-resistant epilepsy now in the 1860s, 1920s especially, yeah. it was frontline treatment for epilepsy. Was it? They knew that if they could get you into ketosis, you wouldn't, you'd be much less, you wouldn't have seizures. And you can stop someone having seizures within one to two days yeah, yeah. of going ketogenic. Yeah. Originally, the ketogenic diet for therapeutic use would be 90% 90, 90 fat. Wow. This is a modified ketogenic diet where it's about 70% fat. Okay, okay. Um, they are now finding that people also still respond to 70, around 70, 80% as well. They still get the same benefits as 90. Yeah. But at the time it was uh, it originated, it was 90%. Yeah. So what are the fats? What fats do you use in your diet? What? Um, I am basically, I'm no longer completely vegetarian as yeah. of a few, two months ago. Yeah. Uh, I started craving chicken. Yeah. So I've eaten a bit. Yeah. But my, so that for me is a very, very big difference. And I've upped my fish. Um, yeah. My so body you knows get fish oils. It needs, it needs, well, this is the protein. So for me, for the protein. my protein has gone up a little bit. Yes. But essentially, uh, butter, coconut oil, olive oil, and salads. Uh, I make my salads are a vehicle for fat. So all the leaf is great, and then olive oil, mozzarella cheese, feta cheese, olives, avocado would be my main fat source for, from salad. Okay, yeah, um, yeah I nice. fry, I love, I've, I've had frying pans for years, which I've never used. I love frying um, uh, duck eggs, because they've got bigger yolks, so they contain more fat. Yeah. You have to work out how to get fat in your diet. Right, so you've got to work so, with fat. We're so conditioned not to have fat so conditioned so you actually have to the first month of try i always challenge people to do it for a month yeah because i think the first month you give it a go the first month you spend time going i can't how do i get fats and you realize how little you eat nuts do you have lots nuts, of nuts and market, seeds? so so every food has got a scale of more to less fat so you want macadamias brazil nuts walnuts um almonds they're the fattier and macadamia is top top nut uh, don't have cashews. Cashews are actually really carby. Peanuts are yes. nuts. So you Peanuts just, you aren't just, nuts. You Neither just, are cashews, are they? Uh, I'm not sure. But, they they're very, but they're one cashew is one gram of carb. One cherry wow. is one gram of carb. Wow. And so when you start looking, you really, you really have to assess uh, how you do what you do. So yeah, leafy greens, brilliant. Broccoli, yeah. cauliflower, yeah, brilliant. Great for menopause anyway. All fabulous. those cruciferous veg, yeah, brilliant. Fabulous. Um, with uh, eggs, duck eggs have got bigger yolks, so that's mm -hmm. more fat. So I have duck eggs. I fry it all in butter. Yeah. Uh, spinach. You use ghee or butter? Yeah, I I'm new to ghee, but I use ghee as well. Yeah. Um, I like the ghee in the coffee. It mm. tastes butterscotch. It's delicious. Mm. Um, uh, Fry up spinach, asparagus, uh, courgettes, mushrooms, 
all in a frying pan, two duck eggs, butter, I grate a really good Somerset organic cheese over the top and some mayonnaise. And that would be a, my evening meal if I if I. I Homemade eat. mayo, is it? Like uh, uh, mustard, olive oil? Yeah, I'm not good at making stuff, so yeah. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. could do that. But um, yeah. it sounds... I mean, I used to be a paleo, so my journey with diet w w was through my yogic tra yogi trainings. When I trained to be a yoga teacher, they advised us to go on a 40-day fast. We'd do either a green fast, juice fast, or nuts and seeds. <laughs> Getting all your salts. Keto toes. <laughs> yes. Um, it didn't suit me. I'm, I am a meat eater, so um, I just got exhausted being on a ve it was a vegan fast I did like just nuts and seeds I think it was literally all it was by day 30 we were advised to do 40 days by day 30 I was like half dying so I just got a tin of sardines so I just have a regular every so often a tin of sardines to keep me going yeah it completely restored me yeah, yeah, yeah. um but on the paleo I felt great yeah. and the paleo is very similar isn't it so oh, I don't know enough but yeah so it's like a Paleolithic diet, so you have nuts, berries, green leafy veg, and, and meats and animal products, really. Yeah. Um, very low carb, but the keto thing, I think it's next level, really. Um, I, I'm, I'm very um, biased to keto, and I totally understand that some people just suit low carb better, but ketones themselves have got such properties. So it's not just that you're lowering the, um, the carbohydrate, it's that you are going into a different metabolic state. And ketones mm. themselves are, I'm told they act more like sig signaling molecules. And they, they just, oh, once, you, once you've got ketones in your brain, your brain has an optimal fuel source. And again, with something like dementia, so they're seeing dementia as type 3 diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, with something like dementia, again, 10 to 20 years before, if they study the brain, they'll see that it's not taking the glucose up properly. Yeah. Um, but the brain has to take the glucose into it to, to function. And this is what stops working properly. So a person can brain can get like 10 to 20 percent um, or 10 percent or something uh, less fuel every day. And then over years, the result ends up being something like dementia or Alzheimer's. But ketones, once they flood your bloodstream, so it takes about three weeks for, for your ketone level to go up mm -hmm. a lot, um, they start flooding your brain. And they get pushed into the brain. And the brain can use ketones. The brain and the heart both prefer ketones for fuel right. over, over glucose. So a failing heart yeah. will seek ketones for fuel. You get... A, there's a, a large percentage more fuel carried per molecule with ketones than with glucose, maybe 20% or wow. something. So yeah. like my mum's heart, so her heart disease, or not her disease, but her angina, yeah. her angina is 95% gone when she's in ketosis. Wow. If she reintroduces a slice of sourdough bread and extra berries, she can't walk up the high street again without having radiating pain down her left arm. Wow. If she spends three or four days upping the um, butter, eggs and bacon because she eats meat, uh, she can overtake people carrying uh, shopping up the high street. And it is literally, it's a switch on, switch off. Amazing. And, and keto, so if you've got a narrowed vessel and it's getting 20% more fuel in the same space, you, you, the capacity for healing with this is phenomenal. Yes. It's formidable. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And the brain clarity. I get a lot of people who try this who start ringing me on, on week three, bibbling like lunatics because they, they are so, they feel so happy. And, and uh, there's also now using a lot of ketosis with mental, um, with depression, uh, bipolar, schizophrenia. Wow. Some people are de-prescribing. De, de off all manner of medications because their brain starts getting the fuel it needs. Your brain is seventy percent fat. It's um, yeah, it's it's uh, phenomenally benefited. amazing, amazing. I mean, f actually, I I'm in perimenopause. I turned fifty, and definitely this morning I woke up with brain fog. I'm feeling very like I've been hit over the head. Yeah. I I found. I mean, I did the paleo, and I did feel amazing on it. Yeah. Um, but it's. And I followed your recent journey. You went up to London, didn't you? Mm. And you were trying mm. out different foods, and you got tempted by a. No, a I. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, tell me about that because uh, I've been that testing. Crash. I've been testing a CGM, so a continuous glucose monitor. So I bought I bought a continuous right. glucose monitor. So I, I've not got it on at the moment. A sensor only lasts two weeks, and they're quite expensive. So I've just it only I've, lasts for two weeks. And you yeah, put it on your. It's an it it measures the glucose in the interstitial fluid. Gosh. So it's uh, you put it on the back of your arm, and then you just hold your phone to your arm when you eat something, and it tells you what your glucose is. Wow. Um, so yeah, I tested, uh, I have a complete love for going to the cinema on my own, watching a film <laughs> and eating popcorn, and I'd been putting off the popcorn test, and it was the worst, it was the worst thing out of everything I've eaten. Um, That's why it's so Moorish, that's uh, why it's it was only the mouth. salt popcorn as well, it wasn't even salt and sweet, which oh I really goodness. like, it was just the salt, and my bloods went from 4.7 to 9.5. And what is the scale? Uh, it's like zero to ten, is it? Kind no, of no. If I was actually diabetic, it could be go. It could go up to twenty or wow. something. It's it's a massive. Uh, yeah, it's a very big difference between being diabetic and not being diabetic. Or type one to type two is different as well. Um, yeah. What are the differences between uh, type two? one is an? I am not. Up is it an type one is an autoimmune yes, disease. Yes, that's and right. And type two is dietary. Yeah. Type type yeah. And and uh, type one is your body literally doesn't make insulin, so you have to inject insulin when you need it. I see. There are see. a lot of people. Everyone's been very wary of type one diabetes with keto because of ketoacidosis. Um, but there's an incredibly good um, Facebook site for type one diabetics called Type One Grit, and they are having amazing glucose control using low carb or keto. Um, and for type a, for the type, for type one, one. Gosh, and this yeah. is a, this is a really new avenue of exploration, but people are getting really good glucose control using uh, keto or low carb. Mm, mm. Yeah, type one grit. Gosh, okay. Well, we'll put all of these links yeah. um, in in the in the the show notes down underneath, so we type, can type two diabetes. People are reversing within weeks. Yes, uh, months. Some. Um, days others yes uh, this is seen as a wow if you go into ketosis it's seen as taking a a, a drug it's it, the the effect on your body is massive so this is why this isn't um medical advice because if you're on it if you inject insulin mm -hmm. and you go into ke and you start a ketogenic diet yeah it's highly likely by the end of 24 hours or one day you have to reduce your insulin by 50%. Right, so you need so to you really don't, monitor so you it. you don't have a low, you need to talk to a, talk to a, a person who understands ketosis and, yes. and diabetes and medication. So it's really yes. important. So you'd need what they have in the States, they have much more sort of functional doctors that, that operate with. There, there, there's a group called Public Health England, uh, sorry, Public Health Collaboration okay. in England. And they are uh, low carb doctors and clinicians. Ah, okay. And you can contact them. Okay, okay. I'll put that in the notes. As yes, well. that would be great. So, um, we pretty much know how to do it. We're going to link to this app. I think I might give this a go. I mean, my I have all the classic things that you're saying. By the mid afternoon, I want a biscuit and a cup of tea, or probably a couple of biscuits and a cup of tea. In the evening, when I go to bed, oh, I, I like my pudding with 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 my food how about i challenge you to do it for a month <laughs> and we meet again in a month and have another talk from your oh my from god your you've thrown the gauntlet from your perspective oh my god that's why and, do we do and it i'll help you i'll help you do it really okay well so you really enjoy the process keto flu you won't enjoy keto flu. So tell me about keto flu. It's it's probably <laughs> it's it's it can be hideous. You have to supplement salt. I tell everyone they have to supplement salt. Nobody believes me. Nobody believes me, and I repeat I it believe. several times. <laughs> you have to. You can need between one to three teaspoons of salt a day. Gosh. Um, especially if you're doing yoga and stuff, or if you're sweating, you yes. really will need extra. Yeah. Just put a bit under your tongue if you got if you feel fuzzy. Keto flu. So tell people, tell me about keto flu. When does it kick in? It's 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 sometime in the first month. It can last a few days. It can last no time, and it can last weeks. And it depends on the person. Okay. You'll feel really fatigued and grumpy, and but it's not it's not the same as hangry. It's your metabolically changing your whole fuel source. From one substance to another, so and the body's and your needing body's to adjust. Just going, what? Yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. What a great time when you you're. You can stink. 
you can oh, God. absolutely <laughs> stink. Ketones come out of your at um, the beginning. Your, oh, you classic. waste ketones because your body's not used to using them. Right. Yet. And that's why you can buy pee sticks and you pee on them and it'll show ketones when you're in ketosis. Okay. Um, your breath. So your body's can getting rid of them. Wow. Because you you breathe out ketones. You can get dry mouth, dry eyes. You can stink. It's it can be well, very it's just smelly. as when I'm teaching yoga online. Very yes. <laughs> yes. You wouldn't have to put up with that. But yes. this is going to be this is an interesting and with a challenge. face mask it'll be doubly interesting. Yes. <laughs> because it's really like wow. Yes. But it doesn't last. None of it lasts. And and the things that do last and seem to get deeper and this long term keto process they've said that you get adaptations up to twenty months. And you I, mean? uh, your mean? body keeps making adaptations. So initially, so it's a big process. Goes, for the body. Yeah. pain goes, yeah. brain fog goes. You get mental clarity. You get high energy levels that are constant. No more dipping in the evenings. Obviously, you lose weight, but that becomes a really secondary byproduct to everything yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. Um, all manner of things improve. Um, I'm having a a new load of stuff happen at fourteen months, which. Is a very strange what experience. Sorts of things? I'm suddenly dropping weight. I, I, this has not been a. It's not been such a weight. Um, I didn't want to be in pain. That was my essential thing. Was I didn't want to be in pain. Mm -hmm. And a, a byproduct is I'm now two stone lighter than I was 14 months ago, and it's fabulous. And I've really, I, I'm in size 12 jeans, which I've never been in. I'm back to my what I was when I was 19, 20. Yeah. As of today. Yeah. So we're talking like in the last month to two months. Gosh, things have uh, I've become Gosh. a little bit more lean, yeah. which is very strange because I'm not exercising. I haven't exercised the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, especially in the beginning, I was in no state to do any. I was in too much pain to do any exercise. I couldn't do anything. I walk everywhere, but yeah, but actual exercise. And now I'm feeling like I'm ready to do some weight bearing stuff get my muscles back because I've always been quite strong and things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 nice. But this, the, all the changes is from diet alone. Yes. It's not, uh, it's not about any other change. There's been no other change except carbohydrates out. Literally it. Even my fat levels are actually no different to what they used to be. When I've looked, oh, when I've looked at them. Really? Yeah. Because I always used to eat lots of um, macadamia. Uh, I used to eat like avocados and olive oil and I'd make these salads and I'd put mozzarella in them anyway, and I'd, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd have butter on the toast. You know, it's it's when I look at the actual fat levels, it's the percentage of fats not not or well, the amount of fats not much difference. But because the, the carbohydrates have gone, gone right gone, down, yeah, yeah. You know, and obviously, when you're fasting, like you're not you're on zero carb when you're fasting. Mm, mm, mm. You have no need to eat carbohydrate. Your body, for you to have glucose. Uh, it's so important for you to have glucose in your body that your body makes your glucose in-house by a process called gluconeogenesis. Oh, interesting. So, so I was going to say the brain needs glucose, doesn't it? Your brain doesn't needs it? some glucose. Yeah. Your red blood cells need some glucose. There are no essential carbohydrates because it's there are essential fatty acids and essential amino acids. Right. You have to get these from outside your body. Yes. They're essential. The reason why there's no essential carbohydrate is because it's so important your body makes your needs. Okay. Otherwise, we'd have died out as a species. And it makes the needs from it makes it, it from makes the fat. It from fat and protein. Yeah. It will take a little bit of your triglyceride and yeah. a little bit of your protein. Yeah. Squishes them together magically, makes glucose, send it to where you need it, and your um, body's very clever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take the protein from your muscles. This is they're so valuable. It takes them from things like your skin has got proteins, uh, connective tissues, which is why when you lose weight in ketosis, you mm. don't have loose skin. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Your skin, your skin well, doesn't go floppy when you lose weight with ketosis oh, like gosh. it does on a low carb, yes, a low fat diet or wow. low calorie diet. You get loose skin because you're not having this process of gluconeogenesis happening. Wow, wow. So um, this is sorry. This is why cultures where they don't have carbohydrate like Inuit and yes. Tibetans and Plains Indians when they're you know roaming with buffalo and they haven't set up loads of uh, agricultural Gardens, stuff yeah. you know they they uh, they don't die uh, and why we wouldn't have died in England 
over winter when there's no harvest and all the animals are in hibernation and you can't find things to eat and you don't get to eat for a week or a few days or two weeks, we would have died out if we didn't have this process of making yeah. this glucose inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you, you can eat glucose, you can eat carbohydrates because you want to, but if you don't, nothing bad happens. Nothing bad will happen. And we have lived evolutionarily far longer as hunter-gatherers in our genes, right? Agriculture is like 10, 12,000 years ago. Very modern. Yeah. It's extremely modern. And then, and then carbohydrate-laden food is 50 years old, you know, or, or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. 100 years old. Yeah. When electricity happened yes. for us to have fridges, yes. when 7-Elevens happened and pizza delivery and you can ring up someone and, and order food and you've got a pantry stocked with whatever, you know, all this is a very relatively recent experience for our bodies. We've yes. never had these times where we don't eat. And that brings on to fasting. Yeah, fasting. I mean, for sure, I, I struggle with fasting. So um, I like the idea that this dietary and lifestyle change, or certainly dietary change, mimics the effects of fasting. One of the things that you will go through in your month of doing this... <laughs> <laughs> is you won't be hungry and you'll be thinking you're really weird well you'll we'll see about that you'll be thinking especially <laughs> the morning I mean for me I'm the morning I always wanted breakfast and for me I'm not hungry because you're in ketosis overnight anyway the ketones go up overnight because you, you've had your fasting time overnight and uh, you just aren't hungry and that's why most people in keto end up going to two meals a day or one meal a day or they start dropping in fasting especially if you're carrying a lot of weight yeah then you can start dropping in fasting and even if you just do um, you eat your supper and then you don't eat till the next supper um, you do that a couple of times a week you really get a lot of weight loss so that's time. intermittent fasting isn't it at least giving a gap of at least 12 hours gives yeah. the system a chance to kind of reset itself doesn't it yeah it starts the process so for me that's time restricted eating right um, fasting is or intermittent fasting is going to be maybe more than 36 hours for, okay. in my brain anyway. yeah 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 there's loads of same terminology that gets crossed over yes it does it does um, there's a whole, I mean, in the, when I was involved in the paleo movement, um, so that, that is a low carb diet. Um, there's a lot of talk about bone broth and things mm. like that. What, what do you know about Super. or think about? Yeah. I've do you ne take I've it yourself? I've never had it because no. I've always been veggie. So my, my, you know, I, I have no doubt my body is now beginning to go more, it's more looking at me in a way I've never... I have never ever, you know, I was born in Totnes and I was born vegetarian. Yes. I have been vegetarian you were born my whole life. Within a stone's throw of Willow Vegetarian Restaurant. I think it's the same year <laughs> as I was born. Ah. I think, or maybe it's, maybe I'm three. And it hasn't changed. I might be three years older than, than Willow, but. Oh, funny. I'm not sure, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, bone broth. After fasting, bone broth is the best thing you can have because it replaces the collagen. I was going to say, yeah. that's great for the collagen. Yeah. For the, for the uh, your intestinal collagen. Ah, okay. So, so when you fast, because you... I mean long... Fa sorry, I mean extended fasting. Okay. So if you're just not eating overnight and you've extended it a few hours, not such a big deal. Right. But if you've gone 36 hours or... or like today I'm on day three of a fast. Um, if I ate meat, I would start with uh, bone I, I bone broth would be ideal. Yeah, or an organ meat maybe even. That's got yeah. a lot. But the collagen in meat. the broth specifically yes. rehydrates the intestine. Yes. So it's a really good way to, if you eat meat, it's a really good way to break any fast. Yes. So you're eating bits of, you're going fish and chicken, are you? I, for your protein. I mean, yeah, fish definitely. Uh, fish definitely. And I've started, in, I used to eat it once a month and I've been eating it four or five times a week okay. for the last two months. What kind of fish do you have? Oh, I go to the chippy. Yeah. I don't have chips. Yeah. I've tested my piece blood glucose. Fish. I can have a big piece of haddock and just eat a bit of the batter, but not much of it. Loads of salt and vinegar and I'm very happy. Very nice. And I've been doing that a bit and canned of tuna, like nothing, with some mayonnaise. Yes. That kind of thing. Oui. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Tell me about food swaps. I mean, I think I always think it's interesting that people like to replace things, like they have to replace bacon if you go vegetarian. You have like fake bacon or whatever mm. it's called. Um, but I know a lot of people like 
to, to replace their favourite foods. Well, how would you replace a bread or a pasta type? Pasta, I'm not sure. Oh, sorry, of course, a zucchini pasta, zucchini spaghetti. Oh, okay, people, so spiralised. Yeah, they'll, they'll make it out of that. Mm. Um, I'm not a pasta head, so it's not been something I've cared about. No. Um, you can make something called chaffles, which are cheesy waffles in a waffle maker. Oh. And you just, you just, they're completely brilliantly keto, and they make a really dense, like, thick uh, or thin, whatever, but a waffle that you can uh, put your butter and marmite on. That's pretty good. Or just made of cheese? Yeah, it's cheese and almond flour ah. and an egg all ah. mixed together, bunged in on a mini waffle maker and then you have this amazing, it's a, it's what they call a game changer because it really gives you that feeling. And you could put things like smoked salmon, avocado, Ooh, cream yeah. cheese, yeah. Uh, butter marmite, whatever on top of it. Yes. You can make them sweet, so you could t- put blueberries and, and whipped cream on, on top of a sweet one if you just add a bit of erythritol or something. Yes, yes. Um, the main sugar substitutes that don't spike insulin and don't raise blood sugars are erythritol, monk that? fruit, and stevia. Okay. Not, not xylitol, xylitol. Not xylitol. Okay. Xylitol is the same as sugar in the effect inside. Ah. Oh. Uh, I know. I I don't understand why, but I've watched a, a interesting. I've watched people testing it, and xylitol is out. But erythritol, monk fruit, and stevia are all great. Where do you get the erythritol? They're like a health shop, is it? These mm. sweeteners. Yeah, you can get them at a health yeah. shop. Yeah. And so you can include them in your cooking. Hundred percent dark chocolate, ninety percent dark chocolate, as much as you like, if you like it. Uh, whipped cream, berries. So desserts are fabulous. You don't need to. You can make fat bombs. So I put cacao <laughs> butter, cacao powder. Um, a bit of a bit of like seventy percent dark chocolate just for the. I, it's because I'm not. You don't have to be so narrow that you just don't have any sugar. You've got your twenty grams. So if your dessert ends up being two grams, yeah, a carbs for a little mini cup of deliciousness. Yes. Perfect. Why not? Why not? Yeah. And so I put that, and then um, you could, if you like alcohol, you could add a bit of whiskey in there, or not. It doesn't matter. You put orange essence in, almond essence in. Um, melt it, add a load of double cream and then put that into little containers, bung them in your freezer yes. and then you've got fat oh. bonds and fat bonds make your ketosis better, it's not that you're having something naughty yes. instead of you're actually having something which is delicious that improves your... And it really fills you up doesn't it? Yeah. You're not, you don't want to scoff that food like no. that do you? It's well, it doesn't even matter if you do Yeah. because it is, it's all what you want so it's not you don't yeah. have to get into a mental thing about denial. It's a very rich I love way it. of eating. That's why I love it. I um, hate the denial thing. It's all. It's, um, it's this is just doesn't it's suit just me. not. <laughs> it's just not that. Um, cauliflower rice. People, yes. People, you can buy it in the supermarket or make it. Um, that's a, yes. There that are keto a... bread recipes. Uh, there's loads of stuff online. It's it's not so much my thing, but it's there's loads of. Yeah. Keto uh, desserts made with almond flour, fabulous. Almond flour is fabulous. Yes, I used to make cakes with almond flour when I was doing the paleo thing. Um, hard to know what to use for sugar. Erythritol is supposed to be not great for the gut flora, as I understand it. Monk fruit, I think, is the best. What's monk fruit? It's, it's I don't know. It's another. So it's some kind of berry, maybe. That's. I shall look that up. I have no idea. We shall look this up. Um, okay, so um, I think that's probably about it. Mm. I'm going to take up this challenge. I will assist. She, she <laughs> Happily. And nothing makes me more, this is honestly, uh, nothing makes me more happy. It on me. <laughs> because I know how good you're going to feel in yeah. one month. Yeah. And, and I know. This bit of tummy won't be there. Yeah. And and you and will, the brain and, fog. And you will just be like that and you'll be really happy. The brain fog and the mood swings and all that perimenal perimenal Who delights. You knew this idea was gonna happen. I know. I didn't on me. I didn't know this idea was gonna happen either. <laughs> I like it. There's obviously a reason. So I'm gonna take up this month's challenge and let, let's come back and, yeah. and talk about it. Okay. So um Thank you so much for watching. We're going to put all the resources in the in the notes below, um, and you can a, a, and a contact, a Facebook contact from for Maya if yeah, you wish. Yeah, I'm happy to answer anything and send you any support as well if you want. Great. Let us know what you think, and I'll see you in a month's time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. <laughs> Bye.